Nolajet here at Ralph's on the Park. Good stuff in here. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Nolajet. Let the good times roll. In this episode, we have a New Orleans breakfast at Ralph's on the Park for brunch and then a burger lunch. Ralph's on the Park is located directly across from New Orleans City Park at 900 City Park Avenue at the intersection of City Park Avenue and North Alexander Street, which is about 13 minutes and 3 miles away from the New Orleans French Quarter. Ralph's on the Park was opened back in 2003 by Ralph Brennan, part of the famous New Orleans Brennan restaurant family, while the building dates back to 1860, when it was first built as a coffee house, which went through several owners, transforming it into various restaurants and bars over the years, with some of the notable past owners being from the Antoine's restaurant family and the Two Jacks restaurant family. Join me for a New Orleans breakfast brunch and a New Orleans lunch at Ralph's on the Park where locals and tourists alike have enjoyed 19 years of New Orleans food inside a building with a 160-year-old tradition of good times, good food, and good people. So they have a dedicated parking lot here for Ralph's on the Park customers, and they also generally have plenty of street parking available as well, and I usually park on the street myself. I've been to many events and activities here at Ralph's on the Park, and I look forward to a return visit. Now, they have a choice here of going through the bar entrance, or we also have the restaurant entrance. We're going to start out by going through the restaurant entrance. So, let's go ahead and go on inside and check this place out. They do have the placemat with their name on it, like so many places. And you see, they've got a pretty nice area here for their main dining room. And like many restaurants in New Orleans, they have the yes and no doors for the people coming in and out of the kitchen. This picture here commemorates that in 1912, City Park Tavern, AKA Old Reliable, opened in this building, which hosted the annual ball of the two well-known gentlemen, a masquerade ball where fancy ladies from Storyville, uh, prostitutes, and society ladies mixed and mingled. The tavern closed at the end of the Storyville era in 1917. There's plenty of other additional beautiful artwork in this area, and overall, the main dining room is a beautiful space, but let's check out the menu now. We have rosé all day, $5 per glass, limit three glasses, no, no limits. Fresh soda, strawberry cream soda, blueberry lemonade, and queen's elixir. Then we have our appetizers with shrimp scully, truffle fries, and smoked salmon toast. Salad, city park salad, berry salad, soups, classic turtle soup, and soup of the day. A two course lunch for $25 with the first course choice of soup of the day or a city park salad. Your second course a choice of Sam's Club, grilled chicken, bourbon tomato jam, bacon and petite greens on focaccia bread, served with spring mixed green salad with parmesan and cherry tomatoes, our barbecue golf shrimp. We have our entrees with black and red fish, grilled chicken, shrimp remoulade po' boy, shrimp and crawfish stuffed catfish, black and tuna cob salad, and Ralph's burger. On the other side, we have our signature cocktails, July cocktail for a cause. Some like it hot. Habanero infused mezcal, fresh squeezed grapefruit and lime, tres agave syrup. 20% of proceeds benefit the Preservation Resource Center of New Orleans. And we have Mr. Bill Sazerac, Garden Gimlet, Death in the Oaks, Pontchartrain Beach, Blood Orange Margarita, the Avenue Sangria. Then we have wine by the glass with sparkling whites and reds. And then we have local craft beers. And then we have dessert cocktails with chocolate martini, espresso martini, and nuts and berries. So of course, I'm starting my lunch out with a little turtle soup au sherry. And to properly do that, you have to add the sherry. Look at there, that's it. Let's dig in now. Woohoo! look at there. Mmm, all right. Oh yeah, another good turtle soup. Ooh. All the turtle soup I've had is so good in New Orleans. We have so many amazing turtle soups. No two are exactly alike for the most part though. They're all quite distinct in their own way. So many good flavors. I have had turtle soups before outside of Louisiana that were not so good though. So if you've ever had turtle soup somewhere outside of Louisiana and didn't like it, you might want to give it another try in New Orleans as they uh, certainly have a much better version of it than most other places in the world I've tried it. So, New 
New Orleans definitely has a lot of amazing varieties of turtle soup. And now, just like I'm about to totally destroy the last of my turtle soup here, go ahead and totally destroy that subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up, comment below, and let me know what you thought about this turtle soup. And while you're down there, make sure to check out links to my Patreon accounts. I do work for tips, so I appreciate any help with that. So for my main course, with so many other good choices, I had to get the cheeseburger to try it out for all of you out there, as I do have to figure out the best cheeseburgers around. So here we go with the first bite. And it's a nice, juicy cheeseburger. This is a good cheeseburger. It's a nice, decent flavor. It's got uh, very good flavors. The meat is cooked perfectly. It has a lot of nice flavors. It's a good basic cheeseburger. There's nothing uh, extraordinarily different about it. It's just your good basic cheeseburger with plenty of good flavors. Uh, the little slice of lettuce on here does make it a little slippy and slidey. It's overall still got good structural integrity, even with the lettuce on there that's causing just a little bit of slippage. Probably would be a little bit better if the lettuce was chopped and it would not slip and slide quite as much. It's still not got a whole lot of slipping and sliding. So overall, this has got really good structural integrity. Just has a little tiny bit of give with that lettuce there. The tomato is holding firm there as well. So there's enough ooey gooey melted cheese to get everything in there. I think I've got a little bit of meat sliding though. I can see a little bit of that meat getting out from under the bun there. And it could cause a little imbalance in the meat bun ratio I do have to worry about here. So it's going down very quickly and easily. The flavors are very nice. I am enjoying every bite of this burger. There's pretty good flavors to really nice, juicy, delicious flavors in each bite that I'm taking. This Wagyu beef has good flavor overall, but uh, it seems I've run out of beef now and I've just got bun because of that slipping and sliding. So our meat bun ratio got thrown off, whereas in the end, I can't be 100% sure if it was from the slipping and sliding or the absolute meat bun ratio. So totally destroyed the burger part. Time to move on to the fries. Now these uh, fries are uh, very tiny, very small and thin. They're very, very crisp on the outside, it looks like. I'm not getting a lot of flexibility. And they've got a nice little crunch in the outside. So they are uh, fried pretty crispy overall. So the uh, majority of these fries are pretty small and tiny, I would say would be the negative. There's a uh, lower proportion of them that are nice, good sized fries like this. And these are uh, overall nicely flavored. They've got a decent amount of salt on them. Uh, it's just overall, a lot of these fries are really tiny. So these are not gonna be the easiest fries to eat. And I'm not gonna make you suffer through all the tiny ones that I have to get through. So I've got one last one to eat. And now, just like I've totally destroyed this cheeseburger and fries, destroy that subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up. Comment below, let me know what you thought about this cheeseburger and fries. And while you're down there, make sure to check out the link to my Patreon accounts. I do it for tips and I appreciate any help with that. So obviously, it's now time for dessert. So I got the lemon ice box pie, which is a tiny little baby pie here. Let's dig in and give it a taste. So it's got some nice colors and it's okay flavors. I have had more lemony and sour tart sorts of lemon ice box pies before. This one's more on the sweet side and not quite as much on the tart side, but it's an okay dessert. I would say that I probably have had far better lemon ice box pies, but I've also had far worse. I put this one right in the average range. Overall, this is a nice way to finish off a lunch like I've had today. As it's still kind of hot outside today with a little extra humidity from some rain. All right, here comes my last bite to polish off my lunch. So just like I've totally destroyed this pie, go ahead and destroy that subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up. Comment below, let me know what you thought about this lemon ice box pie. And while you're down there, go ahead and check out the link to my Patreon accounts. I do it for tips and I appreciate any help with that. So the bill arrived and the total before a tip was $46.28. Okay, for our brunch experience, we're gonna go into the bar here. And before we do brunch, we're gonna do a little exploring. So here's the main bar. And now we're gonna go and head on upstairs and explore the private dining room. So I've been to quite a few private events up in these upstairs dining rooms. A really big bonus of these upstairs rooms is that we get to access the upstairs balcony, which gives us a great view. So here we are with the first room we're gonna take a look at. 
And as you can see, it's a good space for your private events, private dining, things you might need to get done in here, any kind of a meeting. Now here's the view from the balcony and that city park right there across the way. It's a great view and you can also eat on the balcony. And now we're gonna go to the next little private dining room meeting area. So we just have to walk right here behind the stairs and there it is. And we also get to have a nice view in here and they've decorated it with a magnolia flower theme. I think they call this the magnolia room. So this is a great little meeting space and it's got a little more pleasing aesthetic overall, I guess, than the other dining room with the magnolia flowers. And it's got a good little vibe to it. And we're gonna go out and check out the balcony from this angle here. So again, there's City Park and then we rotate around and can see the very corner and all the way down to where we were at before on the balcony. So a little great area to be at, certainly for any kind of event or party you wanna throw upstairs. Definitely a good time. And we're gonna head back downstairs and get started with brunch. Here we are sitting at the bar, and they've got quite a nice collection of items to have. And I'm going to start my brunch with a beer, so prost! We'll probably try some cocktails as well, but let's check out the brunch menu now. So we have Bubbly Bottles, City Park Sparkler, Champagne Under the Oaks, Eye Openers, Barbados Ice Coffee, Corpse Reviver, Pomegranate Sparkler, Ralph's House Bloody Mary, Brandy Milk Punch, then we have our fresh sodas with a strawberry cream soda, a blueberry lemonade, a queen's elixir, and then we have pastries with a biscuit for $6 and a croissant for $6. That's an expensive biscuit. Then our appetizers are our shrimp scully, truffle fries, smoked salmon toast, our soups, a classic turtle soup, soup of the day, salad, city park salad, berry salad, we have brunch sides of stone ground grits, hash brown patty, applewood smoked bacon, jalapeno cheddar sausage. Then we have a three course brunch for $45 with the first course of city park salad or chef soup of the day. Our second course is crawfish benedict or steak and eggs. Our third course is key lime icebox pie or blackout dough bodge cake. Our entrees are mushroom omelet, Monte Cristo sandwich, barbecue shrimp and grits, brunch burger, steak cousard, and city park breakfast. So I went with the three course brunch and the soup of the day today is a cauliflower bisque. So let's dig in. Ooh, it's nice and thick, has a good aroma to it, and it's got a good flavor. It's got a little hint of cauliflower to it. It's not an overwhelmingly strong cauliflower flavor. So it's a very balanced, delicate preparation, I would say. So this is quite tasty. You might not even guess it was cauliflower if you didn't know it's so nice. So, just like I've destroyed this cauliflower bisque, destroy that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, comment below, let me know what you thought about this bisque. And while you're down there, make sure to check out the link to my Patreon accounts. I do work for tips, so I appreciate any help with that. It's time for some NOLA bent with the Some Like It Hot July Cocktail for a Cause with Habanero Mezcal, Grapefruit, Lime, and Agave. Oh yeah. For my second course, I got the Crawfish Benedict, Louisiana Crawfish Cakes and Tails, Poached Eggs, Sautéed Spinach, and Hollandaise. Ooh, look at this thing. Oh, oh, there's lots of good stuff in here. Ooh, so many good things. Oh yeah, that crawfish cake's very nice. These eggs are cooked perfectly. And every bite of this has a lot of great flavors. I probably should have asked for some Tabasco sauce to really kick it up a little bit more. But even without that, this still has some good flavors. And I've still got a little spice in my mouth from that cocktail, too. Ooh, ooh. So, this is uh, some nice stuff that's uh, definitely hitting the spot. This is a perfect brunch meal. This is exactly what I need. A lot of good protein with some good spinach greens to keep me all nice and healthy because uh, it's going to be a long day. We're only getting started here. So, ooh, these crawfish tails are beautiful. The spinach is perfectly cooked the way I like it. So many good flavors here. Such a good balance with each and every bite. I really am enjoying this dish. This was uh, certainly challenging choice with all the other good things on the menu but this is probably I think the best choice that was available for the brunch menu 
In my opinion, although that steak Hussard also looked pretty darn good, so that was almost my choice. But hey, it's crawfish season, and we have to take advantage of it while we can. Oh, a crawfish cake. What a wonderful thing. And look, I've got a whole nother one to go over here, and a whole nother egg. Oh, look at this deliciousness. Every bite is just a joyful explosion of wonderful flavors. This is such a wonderful, wonderful thing to have for your brunch meals. So if you get a chance and you're in New Orleans during crawfish season and you want a great brunch item, this is certainly a good option to sample if you've never tried it before. So this is certainly a Louisiana specialty. So just like I've totally destroyed this crawfish Benedict, go ahead and destroy that subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up. Comment below. Let me know what you thought about this crawfish Benedict. And while you're down there, make sure to check out links to my Patreon accounts. I do work for tips and I appreciate any help with that. Nola Bet next got the garden gimlet with vodka, cucumber, basil syrup, and lime. Oh, ho, ho, cheers. Okay, this is a pretty good drink. Nice. So for my final third course, I got the blackout dough bodge cake, devil sponge cake and chocolate filling, rich chocolate ganache, vanilla, creme anglaise. Ooh, look at here. This is some very chocolatey looking cake and oh yes, some very chocolatey flavors going on here. This is a very large piece of cake for dessert. It's uh, quite a very flavorful, chocolatey piece of wonderful, chocolatey art. I'm enjoying each bite of this. Oh yeah, this is certainly a very good choice. I think I do like this more than the key lime pie that I had for lunch. So I certainly think this is a lot better deal because you get a whole lot more of dessert deliciousness. I uh, might kind of uh, recommend to get a chocolate martini to go along with this if you want to completely over chocolate saturate yourself. But wow, there is quite a large amount of chocolate just in this. So that would be for the super chocolatey people. Ooh, ooh. So this is quite a pleasant dessert and each and every bite has been chock full of wonderful chocolatey flavor. This is uh, quite a pleasure to eat, and what a wonderful way to polish off my brunch meal. Okay, the final bite. Oh, I'm a little sad to see it in. This has been quite a good time. Now don't worry, Nola Bent had quite a few more beers as well, but just like I've destroyed this cake, destroy that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, comment below, let me know what you thought about this Dobodge cake, and while you're down there, make sure to check out link to my Patreon account, because I do work for tips, and I appreciate any help with that. So the check arrived, and the total was $88.15 before tip. So, thanks so much to everybody at Ralph's on the Park for a fantastic time. And thanks so much to all of you out there for tuning into the Nolagent channel, especially to my Patreons. If you would just so kindly take a moment to share this video with any of your friends or contacts that would enjoy it, it really would help me with the YouTube algorithm. And tune in next time for more good food, good times, and good people. Thanks for watching, I really appreciate it. And if you would just click on the little circle here with a picture of my head in there and subscribe to the Nolajet channel, it would really help me a lot. I really appreciate it. Thank you.